G'day. I've got a little challenge for you today. I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil. Uh, you might be able to do it in your head, but I think you'll appreciate doing it on paper. And I want you to write down a two-digit number. That is, a number from 10 to 99, but I want you to choose one that is not a repeated number, like 44 or 66 or 77. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay. Now I want you to write down the same two digits reversed. So if you wrote 67, you can now write 76. You got that. You've now got two numbers on the page. I want you to write the little number, the smaller number, underneath the big one and subtract them. Have you worked that out? Good. Now, you should have either a one or a two digit answer. If you've got a one digit answer, just sit on it for a moment. If you've got a two digit number, I want you to add those two digits together. Now, without telling me, I want you to divide that number exactly in half. Now, I obviously can't see what you've written, but my question is, what are the chances that I have exactly that number of coins in my pocket? Now, hopefully we haven't messed up here, but what are the chances? Well, let's see. Let's see what we get. I do have some coins in my pocket. There are two. Here we go. And what do you think of that? I hope if you've done the calculations correctly, you would have got an answer of 4.5 or 4.5. And, and therein lies an interesting mathematical trick. So if any of you have some old coins lying around that you are prepared to snip in half, perhaps not current ones, I believe that's illegal, but um, you might carry around a spare half coin in your pocket and try this on people. And I will explain the mathematics behind this process, but it's all based on the number nine. If you've seen enough, just go and do it, but otherwise wait, and to, he wait to hear the explanation. Thank you. Well, if you've waited this long, you obviously want to understand why this trick works. And it has to do with a remarkable property of 9. And that is that it's very close to 10. Let's have a look why. If I'm looking for remainders, and I want to know what's left over when I divide a single number by 9, for example, 7, I'm just going to put 7 dots, then I don't even get one complete group of nine out of it, do I? And that would be our remainder. It's all remainder. The same would go for three, or any number less than nine. Four. What if I had a group of ten? And there's my group of ten. If I divide it by nine, I get one clump of nine and a single remainder. That means that when I divide 10 by 9, I get 1 left over. If I have a second 10, that one will have a remainder of 1, and that will have a remainder of 1. So I now have 2 left over. And we know that twice 9 is 18, and there are 2 left over out of 20. If I have 30, that 10 and that 10 and that 10 will each have 1 left over, and that will give me a remainder of 3. So, if I have 80, that will have a remainder of 8. 30 will have a remainder of 3. So if we put these together, and I have a two-digit number, for example, 51, the 50 will have a remainder of 5, and the 1, just like these units, will be a remainder in its own right. 
and together there will be a remainder of 6. I just add the 5 and the 1. And we can check that out. If we divide 51 by 9, 9 fives are 45, and if we subtract, we get a remainder of 6. 1 from each of the 5 tens, and 1 from the unit. What if we go to the hundreds? Let's imagine I've got a hundred dots and I divide that by 90, sorry, I gave the game away, divide it by 9. Well, the fact is it will go into 99 evenly and there'll be one left over. So 9 goes into 100 11 times, 11 9s are 99, and there's that one left over. If I have a second group of 100, Each of them has a remainder of 1. So in other words, 200 has a remainder of 2. I think you can see where this is going. 500 would have a remainder of 5. So if I have a three-digit number like 523, that would have a remainder of 5 plus 2 plus 3. 5 from each of the hundreds, 2 from each of the tens, and the three units left over. All together, 5 and 2 is 7, 7 and 3 is 10. So I'll put, I won't put remainder 10, I'll use the terminology that mathematicians use. And they talk about modulo 9, mod 9. It's a way of talking just about remainders, and this is the terminology. This number has remainder 10, mod 9. But what remainder does 10 have? it has a remainder of 1, 1 plus 0. So we can keep collapsing these remainders. We can get larger and larger numbers. You know that 9 would go into 1,000, not evenly, but it would go into 999 with 1 left over. 10,000, 9,999, 1 left over. So every power of 10, there is a remainder of 1, so it means if I have a number like 26,384 and I want to know what the remainder is when I divide by 9, I just add the digits up. Let's do that. 2 and 6 is 8. And 3 is 11. 8, 19, plus 4 is 23. And then... I add the 2 and the 3 and I get 5. And if you wish to use your calculator or do it by hand, we might do that really quickly. 9's into 2, 6, 3, 8, 4. 9's into 26 goes twice with 8 left over. 9's into 83 goes 9. 9 9's are 81 with 2 left over. 9 3's are 27 with 1 left over. And 9 into 14 goes once with 5 left over. In primary school, they write remainder 5, we would write 5 still divided by the 9, or to be divided by the 9. But there's our remainder of 5. What a fabulously clever system. Now, we're not finished, because there must be shortcuts, or at least mathematicians have found them. And it's called casting out of 9s. If I chose this number up here, for example, which I chose completely randomly. I didn't actually plan to use it for this. When I add these up and get a result, I'm going to divide it by 9, effectively, by adding these to find its remainder. So if I find 9, like a 6 plus a 3, in the sum that I'm performing, that is in that, in that addition, I can ignore it. And just add 2 and 8 is 10 and 4 is 14, and 4 and 1, or 1 and 4 are 5. Same result, but a lot faster. So if I had 2, 1, 7, 9, 8, 3, 4, 6, I could see that the 6 and 3 make 9, the 8 and 1 make 9, the 2 and 7 make 9, there's another 9, that's my remainder. I can cast out 9s. Now you can, we can total it up to check. 
uh, 2 plus 1 plus 7 is 10, and 9 and 8 is 17, 20, so that's 30. And another 6 is 40, so it would in fact give us 40, and 4 plus 0 is 4. But it's so much quicker to cast out 9s. An amazing technique for finding remainders when you're dividing by 9. Now, I still haven't explained the trick to you, but I am going to take an aside, or just take a brief time to share with you something we did with our daughter. Uh, we're fortunate living in Australia that we have a high standard of living, and I acknowledge that. We decided that we wanted our daughter to earn money and learn how to value it. And one of the ways we got her to earn money was when we were driving, we would give her a small amount of money, just a few cents, for every car number plate she found that was divisible by nine. And we taught her this technique. Now, most car number plates only have a, sh a few digits, let's say 216 or 385, uh, 2176 or something, it might be a four digit number. And she would have to add these, 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 6 is 9, so that's divisible by 9. This one, 3 plus 5 is 8, and 8 is 16, and 6 and 1 is 7, that has a remainder of 7, it's not divisible by 9. This one, the 2 plus 1, oh, the 2 and 7 make 9, so it can go, and the 1 plus 6 is 7, again, not divisible by 9. Our daughter got extraordinarily quick at adding. And uh, we chatted about the fact that if we paid someone to tutor her in adding and in basic computation, that would cost a certain amount of money. We, we paid vastly less than that to our daughter and we knew that she was performing thousands, absolutely thousands upon thousands of additions while we were travelling to earn her pocket money and enjoying it. Uh, in another video I'll explain about divisibility by 11 and she learned to subtract very quickly as well. Uh, and there were some other things we did with car number plates. But that's a little aside, and if you're a teacher or a parent, you might consider that, recommending it to your students or using it with your children to encourage them to add quickly. But it's a fabulous technique. Now let me explain why this adding up of digits to get the remainder is so potent when it comes to a question like, do, do I have the right number of coins in my pocket? Remember your challenge was to choose a two-digit number. Now, really it could have been any size. You could choose a 15-digit number if you wished. It just becomes tedious. But here's a two-digit number. Um, let's choose 43. Now we know that has a remainder of 7 when we divide by 9. Correct? We do. Now, I asked you to reverse the digits. Tell me, what is the remainder of this when we divide by 9? Well, we still add the 3 and the 4. It still has the same remainder when we divide by 9. So simply shuffling the number or reversing the number makes no difference. In fact, you could simply shuffle it. So if you had a four or five digit number, it honestly doesn't matter what order you jumble the numbers in, the numerals. You could ask someone to think of a number and they might have four, one, two, seven, six. And then you say, just simply shuffle it and I'll put the six first, so I'll put it above. Six, um, four, seven, one, two. There you go. And if we perform that subtraction, if I subtract this from that, it means I'm subtracting a whole bunch of 9s with a remainder of 7 from another whole bunch of 9s with a remainder of 7 and the remainders subtract and disappear. And what I'm left with is a number that must have zero remainder. In other words, it's divisible by 9. Let's have a look. Now, there are two ways of doing subtract... Actually, a few ways of doing subtractions. Um, 
I'm just going to go add six to get to 40, another three is nine. So that actually has a difference of nine. If we did this one, I didn't plan to, but here we go. <clears throat> we, we used this method when I was growing up. Six from 12, six, eight from 11 is three, three from seven is four, one from four is three, and four from six is two. Let's check it out. Two plus three is five, plus four is nine. Those go, three plus six is nine. Zero remainder. And it will always be true. So back to this, we now have a number that's divisible by nine. In other words, since we, the puzzle required two digit numbers, your answer was one of these numbers. Actually, probably it wouldn't have been this because we're subtracting two numbers less than. Oh, actually, it could have been. Could have been one of these, maybe a bit higher. Uh, you could have chosen 90 and 09. So let's go right up 63, 72, 81. Remember I said that if you had a single digit to leave it alone, but if you had a double digit to add the digits, what are you going to get in every case? Nine. Because every number that's divisible by nine, the digits will add up ultimately to nine, or zero if you're subtracting, but the digits will add up to nine. Look at that. See, these actually added up to 18, I should explain, which adds up to 9, which means the remainder is 0. So, there we go. So, in other words, because of this remarkable property of 9, by asking you to choose a number, reverse it, and subtract the two numbers, you have an, and then to add the digits up, you will always end up with 9. And then I simply ask you to find, to calculate exactly half of that number. And you calculated 4.5 or 4.5. What are the chances of having 4.5 coins in your pocket? Notice I didn't say that amount of money because people could think, oh, I've got $4.50 or 4.5 euros or whatever your currency is. I said four and a half, well, I didn't say four and a half coins. I said, what are the chances I've got exactly that number of coins in my pocket? And people's, you can see them trying to think, does anyone really carry half a coin in their pocket? They say, not very likely. And it's, uh, at that stage, you often mumble something about, gee, I hope I didn't mess this up, or I hope we haven't got this wrong or something. You're putting the coins out. Don't put them all out at once increase the tension a bit by doing it a step at a time as I showed you and uh, I like to hold the last half coin in my hand disguising the fact that it's half until I, I remove my hand and uh, it's quite a dramatic little little uh, trick I think you'll agree so we end up with our four and a half coins I hope you've enjoyed that I could go on this this property by the way opens a whole dimension of mathematics and a lot of interesting little tricks. Um, oh, I'm so tempted just to rave on and on. If you want to Google, there's another number. You can Google that. I'll make a video about this uh, somewhere, hopefully in the next week or two. It also, this interesting number, derives from a very similar, um, certainly from exactly the same principles and a very similar game or, or manipulation to the one we just performed. So many things to share, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Please try it on your friends. Get an old coin or something that resembles a coin or something coined from a foreign country. Snip it in half with a pair of tin snips and away you go. If you've enjoyed it, please leave your comment, like, click on the like button, subscribe if you're not a subscriber so you can find out about this and other videos. And as always, I thank you for watching.